welcome to the Ars Electronica Center. Welcome to Linz. Welcome to another episode of Insight Festival. I am here with a very special co-host today. I'm excited to introduce Laura Welsenbach, the head of the Ars Electronica Export Division. And she is going to be telling you also about some of her projects she's taking care of today. Yes. We have a very special topic today, ecology and sustainability. And this is a rather broad one. So we have uh, brought today to you a quite diverse range of partners that we're going to introduce. So what do we mean by ecology and sustainability, especially in the context of the festival, the new digital deal? Creating change requires all kinds of practices. Art, design, professional development, civic participation, policy, advocacy, imagination, and of course, new visions for our future. When thinking about the festival topic, um, we believe that the internet must serve our collective uh, liberation and ecology sustainability. And we want the internet to help us to dismantle power structures that delay, claim, uh, delay climate actions for the internet itself to become a positive force for climate justice. So I think we must go beyond uh, just technical solution and much more towards the intersection of climate justice. Going forward, we see we need much more development in a lot of interdisciplinary projects and tools for greening the internet as well. And mentorship, collaboration that play a key role in the supporting of technologists on their climate journey and closing the gaps, especially between climate justice and the digital rights uh, and all the efforts that are going into this. So just a very short introduction. Now we go into the different uh, perspectives of the partner that are highlighting uh, the topics from the various angles around the world. Laura, it's your turn. Thank you, Crystal. Yes, we start with ESH 2022, the festival garden in Luxembourg. ESH 2022 is the European capital of culture. In one year from now, or like we will be part in one year from now to be precise, we will do an exhibition at the Möllerei, a former steel factory, uh, part of the production uh, of the steel production. And this is where the sustainability hits in. Um, we are part of redesigning a space that was originally created for a completely different purpose. It should become now a center for digital competencies and skills and exhibitions. We are not the only partners who will do programs there, which I'm really excited about. Uh, the program will start in uh, January, actually, or fe February, with the ZKM, the Center of Art and Media in Karlsruhe. And then it fo it's followed by an exhibition of HEC, the House of Electronic Arts, in Basel. And we will be part in one year from now. And then uh, Historic Consulting will close the exhibition round at the Möllerei in Luxembourg. Uh, why are we talking about this now, right? Uh, this is a journey. It is a long-term project for us. And at the festival, ESH 2022, would like to give you some insight in how this program comes along. In June, Martin Honzig, the cu uh, chief cur curatorial officer and uh, college meeting out on the, our technical director, and me were there and visited this, this wonderful place. How this visit looked like and how we also met other collaborators there is one thing that we can check out now together. Enjoy. Qui sommes-nous en 2022? Comment les artistes euh, peuvent vraiment contribuer à apporter en fait de nouvelles perspectives? Was ist denn relevant für die Gesellschaft im 21. Jahrhundert? Können wir unsere eigene Identität ein Stück weit auch hacken, ja, befragen, öffnen? Wie können Technologien uns helfen, ein besseres Miteinander zu haben? Geh aus meiner Blase raus, riskiere meine Sicherheit und möchte wirklich was bewegen. La programmation de H 2022 est vraiment ancrée dans le, le questionnement du monde contemporain. Le monde que nous connaissons aujourd'hui est un monde en, en transformation. On va proposer finalement de nouvelles perspectives, de nouveaux points de vue en fait sur ces thématiques au travers euh, d'œuvres d'art qui sont euh, très engagées, qui sont très novatrices. Ce que nous faisons, c'est l'intérêt, l'intérêt pour les questions de l'identité. 
Wir befinden uns, wenn wir medienkünstlerisch arbeiten, eigentlich immer im Hier und Jetzt. Wir alle haben gemerkt, der Klimawandel ist real und wir müssen etwas tun, aber auch nicht in diesem Schock zu verbleiben, sondern doch zu sagen, wir alle können etwas tun und wir können diese technologischen Tools dafür nutzen, eine bessere Zukunft zu bauen. Es wird sehr viel darum gehen, um eine zentrale Frage, nämlich die Rolle der Kunst in der Gesellschaft. In einer Gesellschaft, die vor existenziellen Herausforderungen steht. Eine Gesellschaft, die sich nicht mehr viel Zeit geben sollte, um darüber nachzudenken, ob man handelt oder nicht. Wir wollen die Müllerei als Gebäude in ihrer Architektur erlebbar werden lassen. Die Architektur wird ein Mitspieler sein, der ganz eng mit den unterschiedlichen Kunstwerken, die sich mit Identität befassen, in Kontakt kommt. Das ist natürlich eine unglaubliche Chance, so ein Gebäude, diese Müllerei, eben als Ausstellungsort äh, zu transformieren. Aber es geht auch darum, gerade weil es hier so ein äh, wichtiger Industrieort war, neue Narrative zu entwickeln. Und wir wollen diese Geschichte aufgreifen und sie ins 21. Jahrhundert bringen. Unser Anliegen ist, eine Ausstellung zu zeigen, die visionär ist. Wo die Müllerei zu einem Begegnungsort wird. Am Ende des Tages sollen die Leute hier reingehen und nicht dann rausgehen mit hängendem Kopf und sagen, es gibt keine Chance mehr, sondern wir wollen den Leuten Möglichkeiten geben, sich selbst in dieser Zukunft zu finden. Not just Laura, but I think all of us are really excited of how the exhibitions are going to transform this former steel factory. And we are really looking forward to that, I think. Yeah. And now to the next program. We have uh, one of our very special partners, uh, the Garden Aurancania in Chile. It's a collaboration with the Chilean Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Cultural Ministry of Chile. And they will take us to the Bosque Pehuen a privately protected area that conserves, uh, of conservation in the Andes in Chile um, that is dedicated to protecting the ecosystem and conceived actually as a transdisciplinary project where artists are invited to spend some time in form of residencies and to work in this forest actually to develop their projects. And during the festival you're going to experience the, the park, you experience the forest from the perspective of the artist in a virtual encounter. So they are going to show you all those projects uh, playing around with sound, playing around with different um, visuals. It has a lot of cultural and historical dimension, the projects that we show you. And the garden team of the Garden Aurancania will now guide you a little bit through this beautiful, absolutely fantastic ecosystem that you're going to experience during the festival. Have a look. How can we perceive what is not visually tangible in the natural world? An Araucaria tree floating over a vast black space generated by a series of X, Y, Z coordinates created by a leader scanner is the guiding force of the intangible behind polygonal forest. A platform conceived as a virtual encounter within a temperate forest to explore its multiple sound, visual, biological, historical, cultural and conceptual dimensions and reflect on our role as humans upon entering these ecosystems, not as external bodies but as integral components of the rich interrelations coexisting in these sacred natural spaces. We are Fundación Mar Adentro dedicated to creating collaborative experiences between art and science to develop knowledge, awareness and action for nature. Polygonal Forest is inspired by Bosque Bewen, a privately protected area of conservation that protects 882 hectares in the Andean Araucanía in the south of Chile. Recognized as one of the 200 most important biodiversity sites in the world. Since 2014, we developed in this place a residency program that gathers thinkers and creators in a transdisciplinary practice to explore nature stewardship 
strategies and the human and non-human relation at a local and international perspective. Upon entering this platform, visitors will be faced with four paths. An invitation to drift into spaces that offer a series of sensorial experiences from a combination of audiovisual perspectives flowing through the different forest layers. A series of educational exercises to connect with our bodily perception, our environment and emotions. As well as a series of virtual cross-cultural exchanges on art and ecology and experimental digital works submitted by young audiences. We'd like to invite you to walk, observe and reflect through the different paths within Polygonal Forest. It's fantastic to see what our partners have prepared for us in this beautiful spot I wish we can travel to in the near future. <laughs> now, again, we're moving forward to Quebec, a little bit north of Chile, well, a little bit, maybe a bit more than a little bit uh, to Canada. And here, as well as in all places around the world, the last year, the global pandemic and its resulting political economical fa fallouts have kind of resulted into a continuing ecological crisis as well. And of course, the socio-cultural explosion of long simmering systems and injustice and inequality have made the entangling of humans, machines and natural orders a bit even more apparent than before. So the garden in Quebec is looking at the future that appears so uncertain, unstable and unsettling, and they have a a special term that is called research creation. It's not just a term, but it's actually a whole practice that they for years already are implementing in their projects, in their researches. And now they present us two very special projects that are part of their garden in Quebec. And those two are just examples. So they have a huge array of different topics that they are discussing on site in Quebec with their students, faculty members and audiences. And you have a sneak peek now into the garden of Quebec. The Hexagram Network's 2021-2022 interdisciplinary season programming on the theme of emergency will launch on the week of September 8 to 12 in the framework of the 2021 edition of the Ars Electronica Festival. During the festival, participants will have access to 20 contributions from Hexagram Network and Milieu Institute members. Today, we want to focus our attention on two projects addressing the question of the current ecological emergency. These will be presented during the Connecting Milieu session on September 8 at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Central European Time. Bois au métal, created by Gisèle Trudel, professor at Université du Québec à Montréal, presents the documentation of the first art installation of the Canada Research Chair Médiane, presented outdoors in July 2021 at Jardin Botanique de Montréal. The installation experiments artistically with the eco-physiological data of three species of trees collected by the research program Smart Forest. The artwork proposes tree technologies and machine as witness and memory up close and from afar of a continuous sensing relation between forest, weather and climate is situated, constant, variable, cyclical and energetic exchange. Reclaiming the Planet, a project created by Concordia professor Orit Halpern and her students, will be a publication, a series of videotape discussion, and an installation of data visualizations and architectural models. In this piece, the group showcases the results of their current architecture research studio, investigating how Industry 4.0 is transforming territory, environment, and political economy. 
The project involves data visualizing the changing Quebec extraction industry ecologies and imagining speculative design for inhabiting those post-extractionary territories in the future. Yeah, as you could see at the end of the, the last uh, report that there are like eight universities collaborating within this network. That's uh, pretty impressive to get like eight universities under one umbrella, eight Canadian universities. And uh, from students, we now go to youth, uh, a little the more younger audiences that we have. We have uh, in every uh, Inside Festival session, we also dedicate some time to the youth perspectives. And this is also now, last but not least, our last video that we will show of today. Um, it is a student's work of the class 1B of the Boac Anton Kriegergasse in Vienna. A film by Yara, Valentina, Milan, Finn, Ali Khan, Raffaella and Pascal with the beautiful title Das unmögliche Computerspiel, that impossible computer game. It is, it, it is about like, yeah, we can do something about uh, our situation now. We can actually save the world, or can we? Uh, it is about the anticipated school trip to Mars, uh, and it is interrupted by an alien attack. Please pay attention to my personal favorite, uh, the sound design of this beautiful video. Have fun. <laughs> Australien kämpft weiter gegen verheerende Buschbrände. Nach Behördenangaben wurden bislang mehr als 1000 Häuser zerstört und Millionen Hektar Land vernichtet. <lacht> Ja, längst wissen alle, dieses Virus ist nicht so harmlos, wie es aussieht.
Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Mann, es ist unmöglich, diese Welt zu retten. Java. Valentina. Milan. Finn. Alikan. Raffaella. Pascal. Spezialhelfer Lenz. Wow, I mean, a group of students in the age of 10 to 11 have produced this video and I think what they clearly point out is that we have a responsibility, that we need to stop talking and we need to start acting in order to preserve and give them a planet that they can still live in. That brings me actually uh, to an exhibition I want to tell you about as we are not only um, organizing the festival in the Johannes Kepler University, but we are of course also planning a huge program in the Ars Electronica Center, including two new, fully new exhibitions. One of them is called There Is No Planet B. And it deals very much with uh, this topic of energy, as I mean, speaking about the internet before, I mean, that's I think one of the largest uh, consumer of energy. And It is the foundation simply of our life, whether it's uh, small organs, whether it's our body, as well as, of course, all the technical systems. Everything, all the production, all the economy, uh, all the economy runs on energy. And the resources are simply limited. And we need to, to find ways to generate energy in a sustainable manner, to find new resources and not just exploiting our planet more and more but really focusing on, on the one side, uh, the green future of our planet and especially the global community to drastically reduce our ecological footprint on this planet. Uh, we do have a rendering already here of how the exhibition is going to look like. It's at this moment, besides the red, just a little bit colorless, but our <laughs> colleagues are starting to set up all the beautiful projects very soon. And we are welcoming you in the Ars Electronica Center to have a look at this topic of energy and the exhibition actually, why are the works of artists, will try to suggest some possible solutions of how to deal with renewable energies and point at the growing social commitment also that is dealing with this crisis coming from the community, coming from um, artists also around the world. Um, thank you so much at this point for following us, for staying with us, for watching this episode. Please join again next week. Uh, and I would say thanks yes. and goodbye. Bye bye. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, dun, 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 dun